This week's lecture on fire safety is super important and a lot of this information is going to apply to your NCIDQ exam. So this would be a really good week for you to take good notes and read through all the material in your book. Now, the National Fire Protection Association, or the NFPA, reports that most deaths caused by building fires occur in homes and that properly designed fire protection systems, um, those that are designed to minimize the effort that the fire department has to put forth in order to put out a fire, and suppress the spread of smoke, save a lot of lives. The basic principles of fire safety include detection, alarm, and suppression. And many codes and suggestions have been written by the NFPA, which is our nation's leading authority on fire safety. Um, and building codes were actually invented in the beginning to help prevent death from fire, making buildings withstand fire long enough for occupants to reach safety. Now, um, the main code is the NFP 101, or the Life Safety Code. This was written in 2006. And it dictates minimum requirements for reasonable degree of safety in buildings and structures. And it includes um, the means of egress, type of fire alarm system, and type of location of fire and smoke detection equipment. Now, interior designers often involve themselves in checking building codes for fire safety requirements. Whether you specify a fabric for a commercial product or a project, sorry, or um, you're checking a floor plan for the number, size, and location of exits, interior designers rely very heavily on state and local code requirements. In fact, fire safety provisions are probably the most common building code requirements that an interior designer does need to respect. The design professional in charge of a project is ultimately responsible for ensuring that the design meets all the applicable codes. The interior designer must be familiar with the codes for each project's location and make sure that the design complies. Failure to do so can result in big, huge mistakes, delays in construction, and your client is not going to be happy. Today, the most common fire safety objectives in order of importance are one, to protect life, two, to protect property, and three, continuity of operation. Now in terms of protect, protecting the structure, the materials of the building will affect how long the structure can remain erect while under fire. The most important elements of a building structure to be protected are the columns, number one, next are the girders and beams, and lastly the floor slabs. Most large buildings are constructed of either reinforced concrete or protected steel. Now, steel does not burn, but will lose much of its structural strength in a fire and can sag or collapse at the sustained temperatures frequently reached by typical building fires. This is basically what happened with the World Trade Center. So concrete structures are considered to be more fire resistant than steel. To prevent the spread of fire, areas of a building can be divided into compartments and then they can be in enveloped with a fire barrier. This can be done to service cores, occupancy separations, um, between different building functions, for mechanical rooms, places where there could be um, a likely outbreak of a fire, that sort of thing. Now firewalls, also called party walls, are used for occupancy separations. So if you have an, two office two separate office spaces or um, maybe you have a, um, a mall where you have a retail space and a kitchen. These need to be separated by firewalls. Every rental space in the structure will need to be separated by a firewall. They provide continuous protection from the foundation of the building to the roof and to each exterior wall. And they're built so that if one side of the, the wall fails, the other side will remain standing. Firewalls typically have three to five hour ratings, and all corridor walls must have ratings from one to two hours depending on the way the corridors are used, the occupancy, and whether or not there are fire sprinklers. If there are fire sprinklers present, it can reduce the, the amount of time the wall needs to be rated for. Now, areas of refuge are um, called areas of rescue assistance by ADA, 
and they are used in high-rise buildings and large buildings where people may not be able to evacuate and need to wait for assistance. They're usually located near a stairway, such as an enlarged landing, and remain free and clear of smoke uh, and fire for a certain length of time. Now, horizontal exits don't actually leave a building. What they do is provide a safe passage to an area of refuge. And these are fire rated um, so that also they can withstand fire for a certain um, amount of time. Because a fire's vertical spread through a building is the most serious issue, compartmentation requirements around vertical openings tend to be very strict in order to prevent, um, again, the fire from spreading through, through open spaces. Uh, vertical shafts of any kind, including stairs, elevators, ductwork, and electrical wiring and piping chases, have to be enclosed with fire-rated walls and self-closing fire-rated doors. What you see here is a smoke-tight fire damper that can be installed in, in an HVAC duct. ASTM E119 is a standard test method for fire tests of building construction and materials um, and basically gives construction assemblies one, two, three, or four hour fire ratings. Basically, a construction assembly is going to be the wall, the door, the window, um, any sort of assembly inside of a, of a structure. Now, fire um, doors, fire rated door systems include the door, the frame, the hardware, and the opening that there may be in the actual door, like the window here. And this is, example is a collection of various fire rated doors. They're required to protect the openings and fire rated walls and they all require a one hour rating. This means that the assembly, the door, the frame, the hardware, everything can hold back fire for um, about 20 minutes and they must be self-closing and latching. Now for windows, all residential bedrooms must have a window for exit. You cannot create a, bit, a bedroom in a room that doesn't have a window that a person can fit through. Stairways are strictly regulated by um, code and ADA. To help firefighters, at least one exit stairway should be placed in a smoke-proof enclosure and all, them, all of them should have a standpipe so the firefighters can connect their hose. Now, smoke kills more people than anything in a fire. There are several ways to um, manage smoke. One is through confinement. This is by using walls, windows, and door systems to keep the smoke in a confined area. The next is um, dilution, so pumping in outdoor air to dilute the smoke. And exhaustion, using a special exhaust system that can function only during a case of a fire to suck smoke out of the building. Now, egress is essentially a continuous and unobstructed path of travel from any point in the building to its exit, area of refuge, or public way. And there are three components. The first is the exit access. And basically, this leads to an exit and um, has a fire rating of usually about an hour. Now the exit leads from the exit access to the exit discharge and must provide an enclosed protected means of evacuation. Exits usually require a two hour rating and must open to either another exit into an exit discharge or directly onto a public way like the sidewalk. Now sometimes they'll put in an exit passageway which is an, a, another fully enclosed fire rated corridor or hallway and it provides the same level of protection as an exit stair. The exit, the exit passageway is um, basically the surrounding walls and doors leading into it. And an exit passageway is um, usually used to extend an exit. An exit discharge is the safe place that one would enter when proceeding through an exit. This may include public ways, a main lobby, or um, basically a vestibule of a building. 
Now, as a designer, you may be required to um, specify exit signs. You will definitely have to do this on the NCIDQ. So research a little bit further into the requirements and codes that involve exit signs. Um, but basically, they are required whenever there are two or more um, exits. So um, they're located at the doors of all stair enclosures, exit passageways, and horizontal exits on floors. An exit sign is placed at an exterior exit door and at any door exiting a space or area where the direction of egress is unclear. An exit sign is usually required at a door with directional signs at other places. Um, and some smaller occupancies, occupancies may not require them, but basically if you were to walk out into the hallway, you need to be able to see immediately what direction the exit's in. That, that means you would need to place an exit sign in that situation. Now, an interior designer must plan the means of egress carefully on interior projects and coordinate the means of egress requirements with the fire separation and smoke separation requirements. Once a building occupant enters the protected portion of a means of egress, the level of protection cannot be reduced or eliminated unless the code authorities allow for an exemption. Okay, so I'm hitting my YouTube time limit here in a, in a couple minutes and we've got some more material to go through. So I'm gonna cut this video here and start a new one where we left off.